you get these weird S&P rallies and they're very strong rallies. And again, we call them in our subscriber note, head scratching equity pops where people are searching for a narrative and trying to figure out what's going on. A ripper today with the NASDAQ on your screen here, the Q's up over 3%, the S&P uh, nearly up just as much at 2.8%. And what's interesting about this, we flagged for our subscribers, we've been calling it jokingly the Operation VIX twist because there's been this weird, I'll call it seasonality, where the Tuesday before VIX expiration, so VIX expires tomorrow morning, the contracts expire tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., we've been getting these strange rallies, right? These ripper rallies on the Tuesday or even Wednesday of VIX expiration. If we show those on the chart here, you can see that in April, May, and even June, you see that on the day of VIX expiration, the VIX careens lower, right, into these days. And then the day of, uh, again, the Tuesday, which would be today, you get these weird S&P rallies. And they're very strong rallies. And again, we call them in our subscriber note, head scratching equity pops, where people are searching for a narrative and trying to figure out what's going on. We flag this, look, there's VIX positions that roll off tomorrow that could be feeling these equity pops. And again, this is what we've been kind of jokingly calling uh, VIX twist. So why do we call it twist? Well, obviously, the July VIX futures contract expires tomorrow. A bunch of VIX index options expire tomorrow. And so all those are going to wipe away. But next week, we have the FOMC. So you can see there's a very sharp contango here between the July and August contract. In the August, September, all those backdated VIX contracts have to hold the event vol of the FOMC next week, next Wednesday. Uh, they have to bake that in, right? So they're going to maintain or hold a volatility premium because of uh, that event, right? Because the Fed is going to come out and change some interest rate policy. But this week's vol, you can sell that in theory, right? Because of the fact that the event doesn't take place this week. And so that's kind of the joke of the twist. It's like, well, let's sell this week's vol, but we got to we gotta own next week's vol a little bit. And we think that's oftentimes what's happened uh, in essence, where we get this VIX crush into expiration that jacks up uh, the S&P or the Qs, right, for one day in and around expiration. And then all of a sudden that move kind of unwinds. So you can see here that uh, while it, the VIX careened into April expiration, we got this equity market pop. Afterwards, we continued the drown, downtrend. Again, same thing in May and, and even a bit in June here where you get this strange one-day pop, right? And then we continue lower. Thing in this case, obviously, is that, yeah, you want to sell vol now, right? But towards the end of the week, you want to sort of maybe back off of that because of the fact that you got to prepare for the FOMC. You don't really want to be arguably short vol into the FOMC. So that could put a bid back in implied vol, which is a headwind, we believe, for markets, particularly as we approach a couple of key resistance levels, uh, namely 300 in the NASDAQ. If you look at the distribution of gamma here, you can see that 300 is a very big line uh, in the NASDAQ and the Qs, and then obviously 4,000 is a monster level uh, just above for the S&P. So that's the VIX operation twist. We think that that is really a big fuel for today's rally, uh, and that fuel should leave tomorrow. We may get a little bit of a mean reversion move uh, in markets uh, towards the end of the week. So if you have any questions on that, please put them in the comment section below. Hit us up at Spot Gamma or hit subscribe now. You get a free seven-day trial. We email you a daily note, uh, two daily notes actually, uh, describing what we were seeing in the options market.